uh, it was Steve and I's uh, chance to really go after each other on uh, the field. In fact, when he was elected majority whip, he handed out Marucci bats to his entire whip team, fancy Louisiana made red bats. Uh, because the Republicans would never pitch to me in the game, I actually took his fancy red bat to the plate with me because they were going to walk me anyway. And I remember him screaming from the dugout that that bat was expensive and it's not to be used in the game. And I said, to beat Republicans, we don't need to use it. Uh, but after yesterday's incident, it really put uh, a different spotlight on the game. And it's one of the areas where Republicans and Democrats come together for a good cause the Boys and Girls Club, uh, the Literacy Project, and now the Nationals uh, Baseball Academy, which is similar to the Urban Youth Academy in uh, New Orleans. I will tell you that we will miss Steve on the field, but uh, Steve has a long fight ahead of him. And uh, the good thing is I know Steve and I know that he is a fighter, and whether that fight is for the next two weeks, two months, or two years, we know that he will fight all the way to the end. Um, when we got the news of the shooting at the Republican baseball practice, we were at our Democratic baseball practice. And I was there with my three-year-old. And Joe Barton, uh, who coaches the Republicans, was at the Republican practice with his 10-year-old. And it just reminds you that we signed up for this as elected officials, and we put ourselves uh, out there so that we could do what we call public service and contribute back to the country. But it reminds you that our families didn't. So as I thought about Steve's wife, Jennifer, and his uh, two children, it reminds you that they didn't sign up for this. But the other part it tells us is that we have a real mental health crisis in this country. and. Um, whether it's the rhetoric or all bunch of other things, uh, this is not the country that uh, we know. It's not the country that we've sacrificed to make a more perfect union. This country is probably on the verge of going backwards in terms of peace and uh, tranquility and, and all of those things. But nevertheless, um, we will continue with the game tonight. Uh, one thing we thought was important was to not let terror win, not let violence win, and to continue uh, to play it. So what we've seen now is a large uptick in attendance. Usually we have somewhere around 10,000 uh, tickets purchased. As of earlier today, we were well over 18,000, and I expect that number to grow um, tonight. So uh, I'll just close by saying that had I known that this game would get so much attention this year, I probably would have worked out and got in uh, to some shape. And uh, knowing Steve as well as I do, I'm sure he wants the Democrats to win uh, because he just couldn't take the Republican team winning without him. And uh, that would diminish his value to the uh, Republicans. But one thing that I have seen from news stories around the country is the best of what Louisiana is, and that is we can come across partisan lines, we can come across racial lines, and put Louisiana first in the two communities, or uh, the two districts we represent. Uh, we have a great working relationship in uh, solving some of our biggest challenges, and the, the biggest that we faced was, of course, uh, flood insurance that was almost gonna price people out of their homes, and we were able to fix that, and then we came together after the floods in Baton Rouge, we will continue to work together. And if we can get the rest of Congress to uh, do the same, then I think we will be moving in the right direction. But don't get me wrong, there are a bunch of issues we fight about and we fight passionately about. Uh, but uh, when we're done fighting about the issues, we try to find ways we can work together. So with that, I'll take any questions. Well, I will tell you, um, and I think the hospital is, prop is doing a release later and a briefing, but uh, it's no secret that it hit his hip. It's no secret that the, um, the bullet split up and that uh, vital organs are, uh, were hit. Um, the good news is that um, all of the su surgery so far has 
have been successful. And well, his we am not relaying anything to Steve. Steve is under heavy sedation and he's been in surgery, I think, all of the three times that I've been there. So his wife Jennifer, of course, flew up uh, yesterday afternoon uh, when it happened, and she was scheduled to come up anyway for the game. But I just relate to them that uh, we'll get through it, and that Steve has a lot of friends in Congress. And judging by all of the text messages that I have on my phone, he has a lot of friends at home, and a lot of friends who want to express their support for the family. Although many of them uh, don't vote for Steve. And many of them have opposite political views from Steve, uh, but that they all had uh, well wishes for the family. Was there a call to point out during the letter from the ice uh, while the FBI was still investigating the posts that were on uh, the man, the shooter, mm -hmm. posted the New York Times? Yeah, well, I heard Speaker Ryan yesterday, and I heard Lita Pelosi both talk about uh, the rhetoric in Congress. The truth of the matter is, I think actions speak louder than words, and I think that it all starts at the top if you want to know the truth. And uh, I think it goes from the White House to Congress to state legislators to city councils to school boards and uh, so on. And I think that people have to understand that, uh, one, elections have consequences, but two, words have real consequences. And uh, I think the political climate, as far as my lifetime, and I'm not that old, but uh, it's the worst I've ever seen. And I can judge that from the mail we get, the conversations we have, or the people that will come up to you and tell you um, offhanded stuff even in front of your uh, children. But um, we still have a responsibility to govern. We still signed up for this job. In fact, we asked voters to put us in this job. And what we do is that important. We'll continue to do it. But at the same time, uh, I think that we have to recognize that um, we have a mental health crisis in this country and that we are feeding into uh, some very fragile or uh, disturbed minds uh, ideas and language that they just shouldn't hear over and over on TV. Now, do I think the media plays a role in it too? Yes. Do I think that average citizens can play a role in it? Yes. I think it's something that we all have to have a conversation about, that everything that's good for a political party or everything that's good for ratings may not be what's best for the country, and I would expect that that conversation is going to continue. However, if you look at Gabby Gifford's shooting, when I first got to Congress, uh, everybody said the same stuff, and then we went back to Obama's the worst person in the world. So do I think that we'll get back to um, the bitter fights? I do, but I hope that the, at least the language and uh, the rhetoric can be tempered a little bit. Well, I will tell you that the security for members of Congress is just embarrassingly inadequate. And um, we do a lot of things in the, um, with the sense of saving money. Um, but there's an old saying that you can be a penny wise and a pound foolish. And I think that Congress as a whole has done that. Um, we don't consider ourselves that important. We go a lot of places by ourselves. We really like being among the people, and we should be. However, there are only 435 people in the House of Representatives that can declare war for this country, and that's us. And when you look at shaping the direction of the country, the ability to take this country to war, and all the responsibilities that go with being a congressperson in this climate, I think that we should know that the position itself is of such importance that you need uh, protection. and. Um, talked about it at the hospital, talked about it in leadership, talked about it in our uh, briefing with members of Congress. Had Steve Scalise overslept or decided not to go to practice yesterday, this would have been a massacre that we've never seen in this country of members of Congress. And it was a good thing that he went to practice. It was a good thing that uh, both Bailey and Crystal um, were there, and they were able to uh, put the subject down. But if they weren't there, uh, this would have just been something that was unspeakable. So we do need 
uh, better security. And if leadership cannot figure out a way to do it, I'll probably just introduce legislation and try to do it on my own. But it's serious. If you look at Al Green, who is facing increased death threats, if you look at members whose houses are being picketed, people are throwing things at their offices. Three years ago, Emmanuel Cleaver had his office bombed. You know, those are things that are grave concern. But the charity of the Boys and Girls Club, the Literacy Project, and the Nationals uh, Baseball Academy, which brings baseball to inner city communities and combines it with an educational component similar to the Urban Youth Academy in Pontchartrain Park in New Orleans, where I've seen uh, firsthand the renewed interest uh, in minorities in baseball and how that can shape their lives, which I'm a product of. I mean, kept me interested in college and all of those good things, and then you learn a bunch of life lessons with it. Well, I always thought that once you had a number of members together that you had security. And I've been playing in the congressional baseball game now for seven years. And we generally have security at our practices, either Capitol Police or local police. And this year, we just haven't seen that presence. Um, but I think that uh, we should all have money in the budget, in our congressional budgets, so that we could hire um, security. And just remember this, if you have a town hall, and the person wants to do you harm, there are also hundreds or thousands of constituents that's, that are there that could be harmed also. So uh, we may be most times the intended target, but uh, it's about our safety, but it's also about the safety of our constituents that uh, we deal with. And if you just look at yesterday's incident, you saw um, stray bullets that hit anywhere from, I think it was the YMCA to cars and houses. So. Uh, I just think that we have to, as um, Congress, it's a uh, cost of doing business expense, just like after 9-11 we created TSA and now we do so, so much cybersecurity that we d dedicate billions and billions of dollars to keep bad people from hacking either .com or .gov world. I think that we have to uh, add a new line item ex uh, expense uh, for safety of House members. And Senate members already have uh, the ability and the budget to uh, protect themselves, and a lot of them have security. Well, uh, I think he has a long uh, fight to get back to his physical self, but I don't think his voice will be muted long. I really don't. And um, I think that he will be uh, able to advocate and uh, for Louisiana um, in, the, in the near future. Uh, the Louisiana delegation really rallied around each other, former members, current members. So I've gotten texts from um, Cleo Fields to Wendy Vitter all expressing uh, support and um, really just showcasing the unity that we've had uh, before. But I know that Bob Livingston has expressed uh, and reached out and uh, all of the members of the current congressional delegation. But it's, uh, it's a close-knit family. And it should be that way in Louisiana. And I often have to remind my colleagues in Louisiana and especially the local legislature that Louisiana needs are too great to be partisan. We're almost last in education, first in poverty, uh, last in health outcomes. And if you look at everything that's bad, we're number one. And if you look at everything that's good, we're almost last. And so when you represent a state that has that many challenges, not to mention our fragile infrastructure and the fact that we need uh, levee protection and excellent um, water control and drainage, we don't have the luxury to be partisan because we need too much and the people who rely on us need too much. So uh, this is just a continued reminder of how close we are and how close we have to continue to be because at the end of the day, there's four million people in Louisiana relying on all of us to get stuff done.
No. Um, I think you will see a, a very partisan game where we go at it. Um, I know Steve would have it no other way. Uh, and that's what the game always is. But after the game, the two sides get together and uh, we have a reception and we celebrate how much money we raised. Um, unfortunately, last year uh, was the first time we, we lost since I've been here. And we just want to make sure we get uh, the natural order of things established back right, which is us winning and them losing. It's better than last year. I mean, anything was better than uh, the performance last year. The sit-in didn't help, um, but uh, it's had another year to heal and get a little bit stronger. So I would suspect I'm going to do better than I did last year, and I would suspect I'm going to do good enough to win. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to dominate, but I think I can squeak out a win. Well, when we got the news, we were still trying to decide if it was an attack on just the Republicans or whether we were uh, next targets. So um, Capitol Police uh, alerted us. They were there. They made us hunker down in the dugout. They stood out until more security and Capitol Police and Gallaudet Police and D.C. Police could get there, and then it was – uh, so that they could get us out of there. So the first thing was, you know, we were, of course, getting texts and watching what happened at the Republicans, but we were also aware of that we were still out there and that we didn't know if it was a, you know, one person was going to attack them, one was going to attack us. So it was, it was nerve-wracking, and we had concern for our colleagues, but at the same time, we just didn't know what space we were in. And then I was out there with a three-year-old, uh, so it made it just a little bit uh, more challenging. And um, it reminds you of how vulnerable you can be at certain times. So with that, let me just thank everybody uh, for coming out. And I know that uh, I see all of my um, wonderful local uh, media here, and I hope you all get a chance to uh, come out to the game and enjoy the game. And I know it's under um, – very bad uh, circumstances, but the one thing I do know, and Steve and I just took a trip overseas together with our families, and my wife reminded me that 90% of Steve and I's conversation was about this baseball game. And to the extent that people think that this is just a game, <laughs> they're wrong. And uh, it's a lot more uh, than a game, but this year it has a little bit um, more of a, a uh, serious uh, meaning to it, but uh, by no means um, will we let up or do anything else to let the Republicans win. If they win, they're going to earn it, and I just don't see it in the cards this year. So thank you all.